Hello, and welcome to Introduction to Bioinformatics Analysis, a course taught by Philip Richmond. This is section 1-5b, Data Visualization Using IGV Integrative Genomics Viewer. So some quick start instructions. We actually won't need to use the terminal unless you want to use it for SCP within this uh, session, I'm going to use Cyberduck, my file transfer client, in order to transfer between the Westgrid server and my local machine. Either way, what you need to do is you need to copy all of the files from this directory onto your local machine. The things that we need really are the sorted BAM and its associated index and the FASTA file. So, or if you are on a Mac and you want to use the SCP command, that also works. And if you're on a PC, I recommend using WinSCP. So I open up my client, Cyberduck. I click up here for open a new connection. The protocol is SSH file transfer protocol. The server, again, orsonis.westgrid.ca. I enter in my credentials, and it already knows me. You're just going to want to leave that on port 22. Now it's opening this connection. I could cancel it if I wanted to. And voila, now you can see this is that global home directory that we're used to. And if we go back to global, we can also find Scratch. And if we scroll down from Scratch to W, you can find WRC. Now the place that we need to look in is data, lecture 5B files, and we need all three of these files. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click and drag. I'm going to put them on my desktop for now. It looks like they're already there, but yes, why not go ahead and overwrite what's on my desktop. And there's the transfer. These files aren't big, so it shouldn't be shouldn't take too long. There we go. And now I have these files and I can look at them on my desktop. We can just go to desktop. And these most recent files have all been added. So now that we've got our files on our desktop, the next thing we want to do is open up IGV, our integrative genomics viewer. So you should have downloaded this. Uh, if not, you can go to the course website to find a link for download. We'll click on our IGV app. You can also find it using Spotlight. So once IGV opens, the default genome usually is one of the human genome references, and so or human reference genomes. These are these genomes come by default. I've actually added this Saccharomyces cerevisiae myself as well as this Sigma V7, but usually the human genome versions will come just by default with the IGV download. So if we just take a look at HG18 here, across the top we have the different chromosomes. We can click on a single chromosome Chromosome 1, 246 megabases. Down here you can see we have the different genes, so we could zoom in. Let's zoom in on one particular gene. We can keep on zooming. We can keep on zooming. And you can start to see that the gene models are coming through. So the way I'm zooming here is I'm just using this top part. I could also zoom here in and out with these bars. And in fact, this file here, these RepSeq genes, 
that is a GFF file. So if you remember when we were looking at example GFF files, this is what that translates into. However, we, our, our toy, toy example for this data visualization that we just mapped in the previous section is for the Lambda genome. So if we, were tried, if we tried to view the Lambda ba sorted BAM file here, the coordinates wouldn't match up with the human genome and there would be an error. So instead what we need to do is we need to create a new genome and so these are called dot genome files. So we're going to create a new one and we'll call it lambda we'll call it version 1 descriptive name sometimes I just make these the same there's really no difference between them the FASTA file now where we can browse our computer we know that it's on the desktop recently added so we want the .fa file and we don't actually have any gene annotations but if we did we would put them here for the gene file. So now if I hit OK, it asks me where I want to save this. I recommend making an IGV directory somewhere on your computer. That's where I'm going to go ahead and save mine. I've already have this IGV directory on my laptop. And as you can see, instead of the human genome, this is now the Lambda genome. And so we can zoom in we don't have any genes shown, but what we do have is if you go in close enough, again, you can zoom either way here, closest we can get, 36 base pairs, you can actually see the individual base pairs. And so at position 13,520, you can track that down, that's a T. However, this is no fun. We want to look at the reads that we just mapped. So in order to load the reads, we go File, Load from File, and we're going to want to grab the lambda bowtie2.sorted.bam file. And now we can actually see where our reads are mapping. Again, I'm just clicking and dragging left and right here. Really, IGV, you just got to play around with it a little bit, but what we're going to do is we're going to zoom out, and you can see... I'm not sure how these reads are being colored right now. We could take a look at that. There's lots of different options. By right-clicking, you can change uh, the different colors. So let's go ahead and color these by the... Well, let's just get rid of color altogether. Or we can color it by the read strand, so we have some reads mapping on the plus strand, others mapping on the minus strand. We can delete that track. We don't want that track. So what you see here is at the top, this is the coverage histogram, so that at every position you have a count of how many reads. So for this position there are a total of 55 reads and 98% of them or 54 out of the 55 have a C at this position and one read or 2% of them has an N so an N is an unread base or essentially a sequencing artifact or error. Another cool thing that we can see here is that if we zoom in this is a deletion so when in our reads, when they're mapping over this location, they map this part of the read and then they don't have these bases, so this looks like a deletion of C, C, A, C, G, a five base pair deletion right here, and you can see that the coverage is going to drop for that deletion and the reads have this black bar connecting them. So that's saying that we're matching sequence on this side of the read, then there's nothing, and then we match on this side of the deletion. So if we zoom out, we can scroll around, we can look for 
here it looks like another deletion and another one and this looks like it could be a single base pair mutation or variation and so you can get a lot of different information by uh, holding your mouse over certain things or zooming in really you just want to play around this one it looks like every single read at this position is a C even though the reference is a G so that is indicating that this is probably a true variant or a true mutation a true difference between our sample that we mapped and the reference genome that we mapped it to. So go ahead and explore a little more in this space if you like, but that is the ins and outs of the Integrative Genomics Viewer. There are a lot more things that you can do that we will be continuing to add in this space, but as long as you know how to create a genome and as long as you know how to load files into this space, then we will be good for this section. Goodbye.